looks pretty flat down the course, but there is a very subtle crosswind here that is making it hard to maintain a point at the starting line. Yep, Keenan, and that's just something you have to expect when you take part in a sport that is outdoors. That's exactly right, Tommy. This course is one of the most protected in the country. It's a wonderful place to row, but obviously can never control the conditions. And the boats are being pulled. Flag is up. Flag is down. And away we go. The first race of the season for the Princeton University Tigers. First race for a couple of these crews, although a few of these Philly schools have been lining up previous weekends. But this is the first race for the Princeton Heavies. As we look across, 100 meters in, boats are relatively level. These early high strokes of the race. Princeton with a slight edge over the field. It looks like maybe Temple is slightly falling off the pace in these high strokes, but three boats, Drexel, Princeton, and Georgetown, pretty even across. As we look across at 250, Tommy, Princeton is starting to poke their bow ball ahead. Yep. And all these crews, they look comfortable as they come out of their high strokes and start settling into their base rhythm. Prince and Tigers hitting about a 39 to 40 in the meat of their high strokes here. Drexel and Georgetown, fairly similar stroke ratings. This is the part of the race, Tommy, where all four of these crews are going to be striding out to their base rhythm. We'll see the rating come down. They'll try to maintain the power, though. That's the key here in this second 500. We are through 500 now. Unofficially a time of 125 for the Tigers. They're there first. About a boat length over Drexel and Georgetown who are even. They're both up bow to stern over Temple. Yeah, this, uh, this Princeton Varsity boat returning six rowers and the coxswain from the IRA Bronze Varsity 8, including the captain. And uh, yeah, you can see they, they row well together. It looks like they're very comfortable as a crew. That's right, Tommy. It's not often that you return that many people from, you know, a very fast championship caliber crew, but Princeton had a lot of young guys in the boat last year, and they're many returners, so they're going to look to build off of that late season speed that they developed last year, and they appear to be doing it, Tommy. Yeah, a good chunk of open water between Princeton and the rest of the field. Georgetown and Drexel look to be still even. And then both boats are open water ahead of Temple. There is a tight battle here for second place. As we pan across, we're approaching the thousand. The Princeton Tigers are up pretty big, nearly a full boat length of open water. They're cranking at about a 36 and a half right now. For second place right now, it is Georgetown over in lane one, furthest from the camera. They're up about two to three seats over Drexel through the thousand. Drexel up about a half a length of open water over Temple. Now, Keenan, coming into nearly 7.50 to go, if you're the coxswain in the Princeton varsity boat right now, what are you thinking? At this point, Tommy, you're kind of in a vacuum. You're doing your own thing. You have a, an established lead. Now you want to focus internally. You want to look at your numbers. You want to look at your rating. You want to look at your boat speed if you have the speed. And you want to use that to gain more traction. You want to egg your boys on and say, hey, let's beat ourselves. We're, it's us against the clock now. Barring catastrophe, obviously, you're still engaged in a battle here. You're still in a race, Tommy. But you do want to internalize it. Focus on your rowers. Focus on your technique. Focus on your own boat speed. Especially when you have a battle going on behind you, you never know what can happen. That's and true, true Tommy. There's still this battle for second place. Georgetown still a few seats ahead of Drexel, but they're not pulling away. They're not. Great battle here between Georgetown and Drexel. We have Georgetown striking about a 35 and a half. Drexel making a big move now into Georgetown's lead. Drexel striking a 37 and a half. They're a little bit higher on the rating. It is getting a little bit breezy here, Tommy, into this final 500. 
We'll see how these crews attack these conditions. Right now, Georgetown up. I would call it maybe a seat and a half Tommy over Drexel. They stalled out that Drexel move through the 500 to go. And now they're on the attack. Yeah, both boats. Looks almost even right here from our perspective. As we look across, final 250 of this race, Princeton Tigers looking dominant in the first varsity event. They're up a couple lengths of open water over Drexel and Georgetown, who are now engaged in a really fierce battle. Looks like Drexel has pulled even with Georgetown. If not, a couple seats up. Slightly Hello. edging out Georgetown now. Drexel up, seat and a half to two seats and moving. Final 250 for those two crews. Drexel on the charge. Georgetown not going anywhere. They just called it up. Both of those crews up about a boat and a half of open water over Temple, just slightly off the pace here. Final 250 for them. We pan ahead to Princeton. Princeton, their final five strokes. Princeton through now, unofficially a time of 546. We look and Georgetown has now regained the lead over Drexel. Georgetown up about a seat to a seat and a half. Final five strokes, neck and neck. Georgetown, Drexel, final couple. Oh, wow. that was close. Too close to call, Tommy. We're going to have to go to the finish line to get the official word between Georgetown and Drexel for second place. Temple, rounding out the field, final couple strokes, Temple through now. So, unofficially, Princeton in a time of 